Yo, what is up, Bling Nation? It is your man on the mic, Big Daddy Bling, and you cannot be serious. But I tell you what is serious, it's very serious, are these Cubbies right now, who, on the back of a 14-game win streak, are only one game off being the best team in baseball. I know, I know, nobody saw this coming, but I want to hear from you, Bling Nation. So, uh, first up, we have Randy from Arizona. Randy, you are on the mic. Dude, man, I don't know what has happened, but has anybody tested them for doping? Hey, man, hey, no, we cannot stand for that on this show. Baseball takes doping very serious. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm sure there's been, like, one test done or something. Does anybody know? Uh, we have, uh, who do we have next? It's Buck from Wisconsin. Hey, man, I mean, this was supposed to be the Brewers season, but uh, test the entire Cubs organization, man. Now, because uh, something ain't right. Where did this come from? Now, now, Bling Nation, everybody just take a chill pill or something. We cannot be throwing around these sorts of accusations. Uh, we have Brad from Boston. Over to you, man. I just want to say sweep, 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 motherfuckers, and also add the Yankees suck. Go Cubs, go. Go Cubs, go. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are going to win today. Hey guys, I'm Ozzy Villain, and welcome back to the Chicago Cubs. It is Season 9, Episode 6 today. We are at Milwaukee facing the Brewers, and something wonderful is going on. We have just been destroying everything in front of us, except for yesterday's game when we lost 13-1, but that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> we are now top of the division. Not only have we uh, run down the Brewers, we have overtaken them as well. We have guaranteed ourselves at least a wild card spot, and we are one game away from the best teams in baseball who have won 90 games. We have won 89 now it's it's just been absolutely insane uh so let's start by i'm trying to see what the best thing to do here is let's catch you up on how we've been getting on now of course we left off with this three nil over the uh, over the padres uh then we then had a series in kansas city which we won two of three uh we only won one of three in arizona which is a little bit nah, not great uh we won two of three in uh, in oakland and then split a series with detroit at home which is not ideal then things just absolutely took off for us. We won two of three against the Giants. Uh, again, absolutely wonderful stuff. But just look at December. We did lose two of three in Pittsburgh, which is uh, not ideal. We lost the first game here against Atlanta in extra inning. And then we did not lose again for about like three weeks. <laughs> It felt like we won two of three there. We went to St. Louis. We swept them, including a 15-4 win, which is huge. We then went to Toronto. We won all three games there, including a 16-3 win here in game three. And that featured a Vlad home run, as well as a McQuaid three-run home run, a 10-run eighth. And it was just, uh, yeah, absolutely spectacular. Uh, if we have a look at everybody's batting numbers there, you can see McQuaid with five RBIs, Vlad with four, uh, Dela Cruz himself with three, uh, four hits on the day for Cooper Pratt as well, three for uh, Bobby Patterson, just magnificent stuff. And the pitching wasn't too bad either. Perez uh, getting the job done for us and uh, the, the Dutchman maybe not having his greatest outing, but that uh, didn't matter at that point. We already had scored an absolute crap ton of, uh, of runs. We then hosted Miami, which is when we were going to come back initially, but uh, the Brewers series was already shaping up at this point as a big one. We swept a four-game series against them. Now in game two here, the 14-5 win. This featured a grand slam from Bracefield, his second grand slam of the season, and he's quietly having a magnificent rookie season. Uh, we can see him here. He's designated hitting at this point in the season, 20 home runs, averaging just over 250, but uh, 58 RBIs. And he's not an everyday player, or certainly hasn't been throughout most of the season. Uh, but McQuaid, again, got uh, got three hits, four RBIs in this one. Vlad with uh, with three RBIs, as with uh, same with uh, De La Cruz. You'll notice as we've been shifting around the order a little bit, just trying to fit all the, all the bats in, to be honest, is, is my main concern here. And uh, yeah, Garland has come back. We'll have a look at the batting stats in a second. But Garland's come back in and done quite well. Pitching in this one, uh, we can see it there. Joswiak got him away with the win. And uh, yeah, it was uh, generally speaking, with the maybe exception of Joswiak and Hurts, a very good outing for the pitchers as well. We then had a home series against Washington. We won the first two of that, including game one here, a 10-0 win. 
and this featured an incredible eight RBIs from Patterson. Now, it was one RBI short. Uh, the record for the Cubs in a single game is nine. So he was very, very close to equaling an all-time record. And that's like over, it's probably what, over 100, close to 150 years. And we're in 2031. When did Major League Baseball? It was 18 something wasn't eight it was an 1880 so it's probably 150 years of history and uh he, he was one rbi away from uh, equaling it but uh, just a wonderful wonderful performance from him four for five with eight rbis and if we go and have a look at the pitching wasn't too bad there either seven shutout innings only one hit and one walk for perez and then eldridge who has come back in under the expanded roster uh he came in and just closed out the game for us perfectly the streak did come to an end, though, uh, in the game three against Washington. It had to come to an end at some point. So 14 wins in a row before they got the better of us. And then we went to Milwaukee, picked up right where we left off. We have won two of three in this four-game series so far. And if we're, we can win the, the money game here today, we'll be three games clear of them in the standings. And with uh, the games rapidly running down, it would uh, it would almost well. There's, there's still only three games, and uh, you know we still have to play them at, at our place as well. But uh, yeah, you can see we're absolutely just on fire right now. It's a fairly even, um, fairly even league, I suppose. What uh, there's a lot of teams that have a similar-ish record, so it's going to be a very good playoff series. But if we, I'm slightly concerned we're peaking too early here. But if we can, can keep this going then we're going to be very difficult to beat when we do get to the postseason. Now, if we have a quick look at some of the league leaders. Khalil Watson is still up there in batting average is second. Look at Dela Cruz getting himself up there in home runs now as well. Stolen bases. Khalil Watson is still up there. We've still got Dela Cruz up there with the on-base plus slug. Uh, no pitchers are up there right now, but uh, we do have some guys having very, very good seasons. So if we go and uh, go and have a look at our pitching stats... And we can see them here. Now, Gallagher has come back in as well. He's fit again. So he's come back in under the expanded roster. Uh, Quintana is still doing okay. Um, he's 4-3 he's, he's and three as a record. An ERA of 420 now. So, you know, for coming in when he has first season up, I'm fairly pleased with how he has done. And, uh, yeah, no one has been particularly disappointing. Even the guys that have the bad ERAs. McLean is maybe a slight exception. But, you know, Murillo and uh, and Montano are bringing those ERAs back down to where they were from the start of the year. So overall, it's difficult to be upset with uh, with too much here. And if we go and have a look at the hitters, and again, everybody is just getting the job done. Now, there's one new name here from previously, and that is Luca Reyes. He has come up from, uh, from AAA, again, just with the expanded roster. Not sure what we're going to do with him. I'll show you him in just a second. It was more a case of me wanting to have a look at him in Major League Baseball before we make an ultimate decision about what we want to do with him. Uh, the issue he has, and it's not his fault, but he's another left-handed hitter. So I suspect uh, we'll probably look to trade him at the end of the at the end of the season because he's not doing spectacularly, and I really need him to come up and uh, and basically do like uh, Bobby Patterson has done in the past and a couple of others where they've uh, they've just looked spectacular. I think Cooper Pratt did the same thing, didn't he? And uh, and they sort of forced themselves into my plans. He's not done that. And unfortunately for him, as I say, we have a lot of players who can do similar things. But Garland has come back up and look at his batting average improvement. He is doing now what I thought he would do uh, at the start of the year. And just everybody, generally speaking, is sort of just improving to, to, to the mean, you know, where we expected them to be. So very, very pleased with it. The only disappointment, actually, I would probably say is uh, De Leon, but he's a defensive gem in center field. So that's fine. He just needs to not make me angry and he'll be uh, he'll be absolutely fine uh so that is that now one thing i did want uh i'm not sure about so i wanted to ask you guys uh because you will know because you always do uh before we get to that this is uh luca reyes here you may remember we we traded uh D detroit for him he's he's not bad he does have power and he has hit a lot of home runs in triple a but yeah, like I say he's not necessarily come up and done a great job so far for us and uh he's not defensively he's not gonna He's not going to make it as a defensive player. So, yeah, we'll, we'll give him to the end of the season, but I don't think he's going to be sticking around. Now, the question I had for you. Now, it involves Sandy Alcantara. Now, his season is over. He's got an injury another eight weeks. Obviously, we're at the end of September. He's not coming back this year. But his contract with us, now it has a vesting option uh, for next season. Uh, Six-year vesting option requiring 180 pit innings pitch. Now, he's not going to get that number, obviously. He's, at ace, he's below that now, and he's not going to get there. So, my question is... So a vesting option, he hasn't got that. Does that mean that that's it? The contract is 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 done essentially, or is there? It, of course, it is an option. Do we have the option to to keep him, or does he have the option to stay? Because um, I'd really like to get rid of that 17.6 million if I could, because I think we could probably get him back from free agency if we did want to do that for less. 
So, yeah, I'm just curious if you guys can tell me what the answer is to that, because I, I genuinely don't know. Uh, and the contract options, American sport contracts, as you know, if you've watched this channel for any period of time, they just confuse me. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that just help, 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 help. Uh, what's happening with Alcantara next year? All right, let's check these lineups for our game against Milwaukee. All right, so Khalil Watson will lead us off at second base. Garland bats second at third. Patterson in right field bats three. Then we've got Vlad cleaning up at first base. Bracefield DHing at five. De Leon at six in center field. Namala short stopping at seven. Uh, Luca Reyes will get a first hand look at him today. Uh, he bats eight in left field. Langers is going to catch at nine. And then Christian Scott is on the mound for us. He is having a wonderful season. 13 and five record. ERA of 280. Whip of 116. We're up against Sam Middleton for them. He has an ERA. So he has a record of 11 and 7, an ERA of 338 and a whip of 127. So there's not too much between these guys in terms of the stats. The matchups look quite even as well. Now, I think what is an interesting difference here, we have a, a maybe not our strongest team. We're missing Dela Cruz. We're missing McQuaid, um, amongst others. But the reason that they're missing is because they're tired and we're resting them. They have a couple of their big guys, it looks like, that are tired and they're not resting them. So be very interesting to see. If we can win this game without having a couple of our big players and resting them, then that could be uh, that could be huge, couldn't it? So welcome to Milwaukee, the American Family Park. I'm not sure what it's called, uh, to be honest. Anyway, we've got a full count to start things off against Watson, and um, yeah, this is by no means a definitive game, but the, the way and the form that we're in and the way things are going, it does feel a little bit. Like, uh, you know, if we can get out to three games in front, they go, this, we're going to be very, very tough to run down as Watson pops out to start us off. Garland now batting 272 this season. And considering he got dropped for his batting performances earlier on, that is uh, very, very nicely done indeed as... I think it has actually left. It has left. Well done, Mike Garland. He's hit a uh, one-run home run, a solo home run. The man out there has uh, got incredible leap. But it is 1-0 in the top of the first. And Bobby Patterson comes in now, batting 262 this season. A 1-1 pitch on him. American Family Field. There we go. That's what it's called. As Bobby Patterson gets one out into left field for a one-out single. In now will come Vlad, batting 284 this season. It's a 2-2 pitch. And Vlad in the center field. Oh, it's a good diving catch. And that'll be two away. And it'll bring up Bracefield. Now, Vlad, I should have said, has his own 11-game on-base streak as well. So he'll be looking to get uh, that continuing as this goes on. As Bracefield into right field, not good enough on this occasion. And that'll do it for the first. But we do have a lead thanks to Garland's 13th home run of the season. And it'll be Christian Scott now to face Lawler, who is batting 2-something. I forget what it said there now. I might say it at the top here. Uh, now, Christian Scott is on 49 career wins. So, looking for number 50 today, and Garland has given him a chance to do that. So, let's hope we can uh, we can keep that going as uh, as Garland then makes the play at first. Garcia comes in now for them. It's an 0-2 pitch. Scott, not known for his strikeouts. He doesn't get one there. It's into left field. We've got a player running back. I forget who's in left field. It's Reyes. But that just kept going and going and going. And it's uh, found its way over the fence. 367 feet over a 366-foot fence. And it is tied up. So Scott does not have that win potentially in the bag right now. Full count now on Josh Mills and a strikeout for two away. It'll bring up Furnace, who is batting 275. It's a 1 0 pitch. And it is a ground ball. We have it with Cooper Pratt over to first. No, it's Watson over to first. And that is uh, that is the end of the inning. Yeah, I, I, I am going to mess up the field a little bit for this one just because we do have uh, so many plays sort of uh, bench players in and uh, shifted around a bit as De Leon grounds it out there to first 4-1 away bringing up Namala let's see what he can do back in for this one batting 241 he's been a little bit off with his bat this season I'd expect him to be sort of somewhere about 250 260 hitter at, at a minimum and he's just a little ways below that right now at 240 so we'll see what happens if he can pick things up as Reyes comes in now and he grounds it to the shortstop, and the shortstop doesn't have a play. And Luca Reyes gets himself a two-out single for Langers, who's batting 209. It's an 0-1 pitch. Langers has got one into left field, but doesn't quite have the uh, 
the giddy up that the, the Milwaukee hit had and that will stay in the park be caught and in the top of the second Scott will face Chorio now who is batting 316 this season it's a 1-1 pitch it's a ground ball the Marlers there over to first one away in now comes Guzman who's batting 267 it's a 1-2 pitch and it is in to center field and it'll be caught by De Leon. So that is two away for Spencer Jones, batting 262. Spencer Jones sounds like a, uh, someone was in like Dick Tracy or something back in the day. <laughs> it's a very, uh, uh, like, I hunt gangsters, policeman sort of name, isn't it? Uh, all right, Watson back up. 0 for 1 today, a 1-2 pitch. And that is into center field. It looks like it's going to drop in for us. And Khalil Watson has a leadoff single. Now, he is one of the top stealers in the division. Let's see if he can get another one. Garland, who, of course, hit the home run last time up. There goes Watson. Not even close. And just like that, two out, none on. And Bobby Patterson to the plate, who is one for one. It's a 2-1 pitch. Patterson. Oh, that is very good off the bat. It's going to leave us. And Bobby Patterson has restored our lead. In the top of the third with a solo home run. His 14th of the season, 396 feet. And that was very, very nice indeed. It'll bring up Vlad now. 0 for 1 today. It's a first pitch swing. Vlad into left field and that will be caught. And that will end at the top of the third. But we're back in front. And we'll have Christian Scott going back to the mound. It's Kyle Teal at the plate. He is batting 269 this season. A 1-2 pitch. A ground ball to Garland, and Judy makes the play at first. One away. In comes Josh Jung, batting 216. It is a 2 1 pitch, and that is into right center field. That will probably find the fence. De Leon is there, but it's going to be at least a double. So a one out double. Runner at second with one away, and Lawler up to the plate. He is 0 for 1 today. It's a full count. And that is into left field and is not going to be able to stop, I don't think, the runner from scoring. And just like that, the lead is gone again. So an RBI single from Lawler. 2-2, two -two runner at first, one away for Garcia, who is one for one. Absolutely cracked the home run last time up. Langers cannot stop the runner from stealing. And they have a runner in scoring position again. And uh, never mind, that is going to be 4-2. Up to, wow, that it was hit, wasn't it? That was not coming back. <laughs> His second home run of the game at 453 feet and counting. That is the biggest hit we've seen this season for sure. And it is now 4-2. Josh Mills comes in now 0 for 1. It's a 1-2 pitch. It's a strikeout. And uh, this would go down as one of Christian Scott's worst outings of the season, I think. An 0-2 pitch now on Furness. That's into right field. Patterson can only field it on the bounce. So that is uh, one, uh, one on that first and two out for Chorio who is 0 for 1 it's a 1-2 pitch and Scott gets the strikeout to end the inning but a disastrous third really we give up three we're 4-2 down and Bracefield will lead us off 0 for 1 today a 1-2 pitch and a strikeout to start off the inning in comes De Leon now who's 0 for 1 he has picked up his uh, his form he was in a slump I think last time I saw you as that might be an infield hit for De Leon it is and he's another one of these guys, a very, very good base runner. Can he get a steal here, I wonder? Namala now 0 for 1. First pitch swing. And that is a double play ball. Oh, luckily, Namala's a decent runner himself. So just the man at second, he's injured. And he'll be okay with the Leon. So Reyes now comes in. 1 for 1 today. First pitch. There goes Namala. Namala on an 11 base stolen, a uh, 12 base uh, stolen base streak. Now he's on a 13 stolen base streak and Reyes has a chance to cut the lead back to one a 1-1 one, one pitch and Reyes has popped it up and that will do it for the fourth we are still 4-2 down and Johnson uh Johnson where'd I get that from Scott will face Guzman it's a 3-2 pitch and it is I mean I'll take a strike out that looked high and it was indeed it looked uh, maybe just caught it I'd be annoyed if I was the hitter and got given out on that one a 1-1 one, one to Spencer Jones that's into right field. Bobby Patterson is there for two away. And it'll bring up Kyle Teal, who is 0 for 1. Another 1-1 one, one pitch. 
And that is into center field. De Leon's going back. De Leon is not able to make a play. It's off the very top of the wall. And it'll be a two-out double. And it, can we get out of this without giving up any other runs? It is Josh Jung who is one for one. A 2-2 pitch. And Christian Scott ends it with a strikeout. And we will go to the fifth for two down. In comes Langers now to lead us off. 0 for 1 today. Oh, 0 1 pitch. And Langers ground ball to third, one away. So back we go to the top. It's Watson who is 1 for 2. A 2 2 pitch. And Watson into right center field. That'll be at least a double. We know Watson is quick, but he will stop at second. And can we now drive in this run with the top of our order? Judy's up next. It is, uh, he's one for two today. A 1-1 one, one pitch. Garland, oh, it's to the shortstop. And it's out. No, it's not out. It's an error at first. So runners at the corners with one away. Now, this is a chance. It's going to be Bobby Patterson who hit a home run last time up. He's two for two today. An 0-1 oh, pitch. Bobby Patterson, infield fly, outside of a double play. It's probably the worst thing he could have done. It takes away a sack fly, and Vlad now, he's over 2, needs to drive in a run. It's a 3-1 pitch, and Vlad loads the bases, extends the on-base streak to 12 games, and it is now Bracefield, already hit two grand slams this season, a 1-2 pitch. Oh, he's done another one! Mason Bracefield, Mr. Grand Slam! It is now 6-4, 359 feet. And what is the record for most Grand Slams in a season? Another genuine question. You guys were very quick to shut me down on the uh, not many people could have got 300 home runs before 30 last episode. Uh, plenty have done it, as it turns out. Some have even got to 400 before 30. Um, so, yeah, I was very wrong on that one. But most Grand Slams in a season... I mean, three seems like a lot, but no doubt... The one thing I learned continuously from playing this and, and thinking that the something is historic is that baseball's been around a very long time and most things have been done before. So um, I would have, probably back in the day, uh, maybe it's happened a lot more, I don't know. But uh, anyway, oh, Christian Scott is out of the game. Now he is on for his 50th win. Ryan Gallagher, back from injury himself, is going to come out of the bullpen. And let's hope he can hit the, uh, hit the ground running here. And uh, speaking of hit the ground running, there goes the runner to second. So one out, runner at second. Mills at the plate, who's 0 for 2. A 2-1 pitch into right field. That'll be 6-5. to five As Gallagher gives up another run. And uh, this, I believe, is his first outing since coming back from his injury. Uh, and that is the reason that he's in the, in the bullpen and not... Um, not in the starting rotation. I just wanted to sort of ease him back into things a little bit. It's a 1-2 pitch now on Furnace. That is into center field. De Leon goes back. We'll make the catch. The runner will get to third, though. So with two out, the tying run is 90 feet away. And Churio's at the plate. He is 0 for 2. Come on, Gallagher. Let's sit him down, mate. It's a first pitch swing. It's into right field. It is going to be caught by Patterson. And we will go to the sixth with a 6-5 six lead. And uh, Pilkington will face Namala, who is 0 for 2. It's a first pitch swing. Namala grounds it to the third baseman and will be out at first, one away. Reyes will come up now, 1 for 2. A 1 2 pitch. Reyes strikes out looking. So that is 2 away for Langers, who is 0 for 2. It is a 1 2 pitch. And Langers grounds it to the shortstop. Is he going to be able to reach on that? No, it's a good play. And that'll do it for the top of the sixth. Uh, Gallagher will continue to Guzman, who is 0 for 2. It is a 2-2 pitch. And that is straight back at him. Easily done. Over to first. One away. Up comes Spencer Jones, who's 0 for 2. A 2-1 pitch. And that is a ground ball to the second baseman. Watson with an easy play over to first. Two away. And it is Kyle Teal, who is 1 for 2. An 0-2 pitch. And Gallagher sits him down on strikes. And will go to the seventh with a one-run lead. Watson to lead us off. He's two for three. It's a 2-1 pitch. Watson, is it going to get through? Oh, it's a good catch by the first baseman. Unlucky. So one away for Garland now, who's one for three. It is a 1-0 pitch. Come on, Judy. Oh, he's hit it, but not well enough. And that'll be caught in right field for two away. 
bringing up Bobby Patterson, who is two for three today. It's an 0-2 pitch. And Patterson, it is grounded to the second baseman. Ends the top of the seventh, and we will stretch with a one-run lead over the Brewers. All right, welcome back. It is Jung to lead them off. Gallagher stays on the mound for us. It is a 3-1 pitch, and that is into center field. De Leon looks like he's going to field it on the bounce, and then it'll be a leadoff single. So that is uh, not the ideal start. Lawler now, who is one for three, a first pitch swing. There goes the runner. Oh, he stopped. He started. He tries to get back, and he does. Oh, that got his heart rate going, didn't it? A 1-0 pitch now. Lawler tries to bunt and misses. So a one, we're doing this pitch by pitch, apparently. A full count. And eventually we get our man as he is struck out looking. And that'll do it for Gallagher as the DJ will come out to face Garcia, who is two for two with two home runs. So if you want to hit him, I will forgive it on this one occasion. And there's a strikeout. Have some of that. Not, no one can deal with the DJ on form. Josh Mills now, who's one for three with two out in the runner at first. It is a 1-1 one -one pitch. It is into right field. Bobby Patterson comes in, makes the catch, ends the seventh. And we will go to the eighth. Vlad to lead us off. 0 for 2. A 1-2 pitch. And he strikes out looking. Not been Vlad's greatest season, this one, has it? In comes Bracefield, missed the Grand Slam. It is a 3-1 pitch, and Bracefield has popped that up into centre field. That'll be two away. And it'll bring up De Leon, who is one for three. An 0-1 pitch. De Leon, that might drop in, you know. It is going to find the uh, little bit of grass out there that uh, second base, left uh, right field and centre field couldn't get to. So it's a two-out single. We've got De Leon surely stealing second with Namala at the plate. 0 for 3. And Namala, it's just in front of the plate. He's got a good jump out of the batter's box. And somehow we've managed to get ourselves runners at second and third. Namala is out of the game with back pain. So that's not ideal. De La Cruz will come in to run. And Reyes is at the plate. 1 for 3 today. A full count. Can we load the bases here, Luca? He can. That looked a little bit close, if I'm honest. But uh, we get a... Oh, no, it was well outside. Good job. And Langer's now with a loaded bases. A new man on the mound in Kina Leon. Can Langer's hit a second grand slam of the game? It's a full count. We'll take a walk, mate. Just get yourself... Oh, he has. He's walked in a run. So it is now 7-5. to five. That gives us a little bit of breathing space with Watson at the plate, who is 2 for 4 today. A 1-2. Oh, he's hit him. So Watson takes a bruise and gets an RBI for that. That is two across the plate now this inning. It is eight to five. Two outloaded bases for Garland, who is one for four. An 0-2 pitch. And Garland, I don't think that's going to drop down. And it will be the end of the top of the eighth. But we've extended the lead. It's 8-5. And Furness will face DJ. Furness one for three today. It is a 2-2 pitch. And a strikeout. That is one away. In comes Chorio, who's 0 for 3. Another 2-2 two -two pitch. And another strikeout for DJ. When he's on, he's on, isn't he? When he's on, there is no one better than DJ. Guzman now, who is 0 for 3. It's another 2-2 two -two pitch. Can he strike out the side? Oh, DJ. He is, he's the GM's favorite, is DJ. Part of the reason why I offered him 10 or 11 million or whatever I did, I think, to be honest. Jack Brenningen. Now, we almost, we went after him in free agency. We just couldn't quite afford him. Uh, he's going to face Bobby Patterson, who's leading us off. And we've got a right-hander on the mound again, which for the most part seems to suit our lineup. But Bobby has popped that up for one away. In comes Vlad. He is over three. Has been on base, though, of course, with the walk. And Vlad might have himself another hit. Here he does. So that is a one-out single. Bracefield now... One for four, but what a one it was. He strikes out. And that is two down for De Leon, who is two for four. A first pitch swing. De Leon grounds it to the second baseman. So we have a three-run lead going into the ninth. Does DJ come back out? No, he doesn't. Murillo will come out to try and close this down for us. Uh, we've got Jones at the plate, 0 for three. It is a 2-0 pitch. What we don't want to be doing is getting into a situation where we have tying run at the plate as we have a leadoff single. All right, Teal, one for three. It's a 2-2 two -two pitch, and that is a pitcher killer, and we've got ourselves in a situation where we have tying run at the plate with none out. 
Uh, it is Sedano coming in to pinch hit, batting 270 this season. It's an 0-1 pitch. And that is into left field. It is, uh, who's in left field? Reyes, isn't it? Going back, makes the catch. Runners stay where they are. So that feels important with one away. Can we get a double play now to end the game? Lawler, who is one for four. It is a 2-1 pitch. It is, oh, it's very deep into left field. And it is a game tying. Three run, home run in the bottom of the ninth. Murillo, again, we just can't find a reliable closer this season. There goes Scott's first uh, 50th win, I should say. That's uh, been blown as well. And we're not out of this one yet because uh, Garcia already has three home runs today. A 2-2 pitch and another pitcher killer. Thankfully, we had a bit of a shift on there. and We get the out at first. So two down for Mills now, who's one for four. It's a 1-1 pitch. And that is into center field. De Leon going back. Can't make the catch. And the winning run is now at second with two away. This is going to be a proper stuff up by Murillo. He's going to face Furnace, who's one for four. It's a first pitch swing. We've walked him. So that gets the force into play for Chorio now, who's 0 for 4. A 1-0 pitch. And that is going to be popped up. It should be caught. And it's extra inning as we snatch, uh, well, certainly not defeat yet, but uh, we snatch a draw out of the uh, jaws of victory. So Cooper Pratt is going to pinch it here. He has come into the game potentially perhaps for, uh, who was it, got injured? Namala, wasn't it? So uh, 282, Cooper's batting this season. And with a runner at second, he has managed to drive that run over to third now. So that's good. We have two outs to try and get that run across the plate. It is Reyes, who is one for three, that uh, comes in. They walk him, trying to set up a double play from Langers, but he has been pinch hit for McQuaid. Now, McQuaid batting 280 this season. He's got his 250th career double since we saw him last. A 3-0 pitch. And we now have loaded bases with one out. And it is Khalil Watson to the plate. Two for four today. First pitch swing. Watson, that's going to drop in. That's going to score two, I would imagine, as it is a Khalil Watson two RBI single. So it is ten to eight now. One out, runners at first and second for Garland, who's one for five. It's a one-two pitch. Garland to the first baseman. Is he going to be able to beat the throw? He does, I think. So we've got loaded bases again with one away. This time for Bobby Patterson, who is two for five. A full count. Patterson up the middle with a pitcher killer. That's going to drive in one. Is it going to drive in two? Watson comes home. So another two RBI single makes it 12 to eight. Still one away. And Vlad Jr. will come up to the plate now. Another full count. New man on the mound as well. And Vlad draws the walk. So loaded bases again with one away. This time Bracefield. Could he hit two grand slams in a game? It's a 1-1 pitch. Bracefield, it's not a grand slam, but it might just clean the bases. Two runs are across. Is Vlad going to come home as well? It is not going to get there. So Vlad gets thrown out of the plate. Is that going to be scored as a 2-RBI triple or a 2-RBI double? 2-RBI double. It is now 14 to 8. Two out, runner at third for De Leon, who is two for five. It's a first pitch swing. De Leon to the shortstop. That will end the inning. But six runs in the top of the tenth. Surely we're not going to blow this. And Eldridge will come onto the mound. It is Guzman at the plate. He's 0 for 4. We've got a 4.43 ERA this season for Eldridge. And with the runner at second, we will get the out at first. The runner will go to third, but that doesn't really matter right now, does it? Because we've got uh, six runs to play with here. Jones, who's one for four. It's a 2-2 pitch. And a strikeout for Eldridge for their final out. It is Keel. He is two for four. It's a 1-2 pitch. And I tell you what, that's not a bad 10th inning from us, is it? Magnificent stuff. All right, so the Namala injury is uh, Latamasis Dorsey back strain. Back strain. Uh, so five days, he is going to be missing four. That is fine. Uh, and Bracefield, I mean, what a performance from him. Um, six RBIs, just absolutely huge. And uh, yeah, did a very, very good job there for us. And we did manage to beat them without, of course, let's not forget, De La Cruz or McQuaid. So we now have a three-game lead. We are seven games away from clinching the division. And uh, well, what do we do in this situation? Uh, don't forget MVP nominees, of course, as well. What we will do is uh, 
I'm fairly confident that we're going to be able to hang on to this, but I don't want to assume we're going to hang on to it. So uh, we might come back when we have a chance to actually go and win the division. We've only done it once or once before, I think. So it is still quite a big deal for us. So we'll come back. I'm hoping this game against Milwaukee will be enough for us to clinch it, but maybe it comes before that. We'll just kind of see. But uh, if you've enjoyed that, thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. MVP nominees. And I'll see you next time. Take care.